What's up, family? It's your ghetto news reporter, Mary Lee. No dance between Mary and Lee. Today is December 10th, 2019, so they say. It's early about 5.28 in the morning in Chicago. The sun isn't even up yet. I have to get my butt up and exercise because where I'm from, Chicago, they say you got to pay yourself first. And that's what anything you do. And sometimes I take a day off. I'm not going to lie. Because it's harder to think about yourself than it is others. Especially if you have that motherly instinct. And, you know, most real ladies and parents and mothers, you know, have that about themselves. At least they did back in the day. Nowadays, people are more selfish even when it comes to children. You know, you have some parents out there, they would put a man before their own child. Um, I'm not about to go off into that. I don't want to be judgmental and all that but I'm just saying I once had a sister and I have to tell this story because there are a lot of ladies out there that does you know put their children on the back burner for so called love or the attention of a man because a lot of them didn't grow up with their parents or their father and they um, miss that strong you know, male figure in their life and then a man come around and give them that sense of security and things of that nature. And I have to, you know, talk about this um, situation with my so-called oldest sister, Linda. You know, for those ladies out there that suffer from low self-esteem, you know, me being one of them at one time, but I just felt in my heart that uh, I couldn't let a man just take that much control over me. But I have fallen victim in relationships, you know, as far as ladies are concerned, you know, because ladies tend to know other ladies, you know, better than the opposite sex, which would be, you know, a man. And I think it was Fat Joe that said it best. You know, sometimes you have to send a lady to do a man's job. Now, with that said, I once had this uh, sister. I still have. I haven't seen her in a while or whatever. By the name of Linda Nelson. And she was very selfish, especially when it came to money. You know, she she just, she saw nothing other than you know, a dollar sign, as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, she told me when I went to live with her at the age of 17, after leaving the East Coast Wagon Train program, a program for, you know, teenagers with, you know, behavioral problems, and it's supposed to, you know, rehabilitate them and make them a little more, you know, Ready for the world, if that's what you want to call it. And I left there being the first girl head teamster of the uh, program, meaning, you know, I I guess I did pretty good and stuff. I should have been the first girl head scout leader, but they cheated me out of that, you know. But sometimes you got to take what you can, you know, when it's given to you. What they say is better than nothing. I would consider myself the first girl head scout though of my city Chicago and for those of y'all who know me for real for real you know I ain't lying but as far as my sister I went to live with her and she said you know I heard you uh, like girls and uh, because my caseworker told her that I had kissed a white girl before I got on the plane to go back to uh, Chicago from Franklin Pennsylvania where I was you know, residing that at the East Coast Wagon Train program, 
group home party at the time before coming back to Chicago. You understand what I'm saying? At the age of 17. And my sister, you know, caught wind of it and she said, you're going to be staying with me and I have four daughters and I don't want you, you know, touching them and things of that nature. And I'm glad she gave me that rude awakening because, you know, me being a child abuse victim, you understand what I'm saying? And my hormones was jumping like a disco. And, you know, she did have some nice looking daughters or whatever and stuff, you know, not that the thought ever came to my mind because it never did. But sometimes you need to be reminded of things and stuff or, you know, made aware of them. You understand what I'm saying? It's called prevention. And Oprah was uh, crowned, you know, Miss Fire Prevention. So this is like a prevention story video, whatever, you know. For those of y'all who are uh, in a domestic violence relationship, you understand what I'm saying? Now, my sister, Linda Nelson, you know, she told me that, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, I get it. You understand what I'm saying? But still, my um, emotions was high because I had, you know, left so-called friends back in, you know, Franklin, Pennsylvania, and, you know, you know, my sexual peak was at its uh, peak, you understand what I'm saying? And, you know, I didn't have nothing to do, and, you know, of course... You know, an idle mind is the devil's workshop or whatever and stuff. Now, I'm not going to go off into a whole lot of things that people already know. You understand what I'm saying? Let's put it like this. I never touched her, her um, daughters and stuff. And thank God I didn't because, Lord, I, I wouldn't be able to, to um, tell this next story for real, for real. But I remember my um, oldest sister, you know, Linda, being in a domestic violent relationship with this guy by the name of Terry. And he was a dark skinned, I believe, you know, I would like to say Native American or whatever and stuff. And, you know, he hit her. He used to hit her and stuff, you know. And one time I climbed out, you know, my bedroom window that was, you know, back by the, on the first floor in the, um, in the house I was staying at, you know, 7547 South Walcott in Chicago. And I climbed out the window, and I have to say this, Eminem and Reed, Anna have a song called, Just Gonna Stand There and Watch Me Burn. And he talk about window pane, because, you know, life imitates art, and art imitates life. And this is the truth. I climbed out the window, and I went and got the police. And I brought the police to the front door of my sister's house. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. 7547 South Walcott in Chicago, Illinois. And she opened the door, and the police and I, you know, was on the outside, and she had a black eye. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. And I told the police she had a black eye or something was wrong and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't know she had a black eye, you know, but I knew something was wrong because I heard the ruckus, right? And when she opened up the door, it, it was confirmation. But she sat there and told the police everything was all right. And, you know, Terry, he was right there. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't get arrested, none of that. So I felt she put me in a compromising position, my sister Linda Nelson, and her being the oldest one. But not only that, she reminded me not to mess with her daughters. Now... What kind of example did you set for your daughters? You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. My nieces, supposedly. You know, what? By saying that it's okay for a man to hit you and stuff? You understand what I'm saying? You know, I did the right thing. You understand what I'm saying? I went and got law enforcement. And she sat there with a black eye and said everything was okay. And I couldn't understand that because, you know, not too long afterwards, you know, Terry tried to come at me like he came at my sister. And I told him, look him. You know what I'm saying? I'm not my motherfucking sister. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you got to remember, I'm fresh out of the woods, the Vision Quest program. I'm the head teamster. You understand what I'm saying? Of the wagon train program, which means I was cock strong in the teenagers and all that. I said, I will cut your fucking throat. 
You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. And I meant that shit. And he backed the fuck down. See, I'm not the toughest person in the world. But I'm saying, don't set me up for failure. If you're not going to, you know, toot your own horn. You understand what I'm saying? Follow your own beat to your drum and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? And then I found myself, you know, taking up for my nieces with the guys on the block fighting for them or whatever and stuff. And I realized, oh, okay, somebody's trying to get me killed and shit. You understand what I'm saying? So it goes back to this uh, video I was watching with Oprah. And, you know, she said she was hanging on to, you know, this one guy's bumper, you know, didn't want him to leave or whatever and stuff. And he looked back and said, see, your problem is you think you're special. See, the problem is we shouldn't have to have a person of any uh, sex tell us that we're special if we know we're special. See, I believe people treat you the way you uh, treat yourself. You understand what I'm saying? But for the ones who put yourself on a high pedestal, you understand what I'm saying? If you aren't the right to be there, don't let nobody kick the ladder from up under you. You understand what I'm saying? Real choke. And that's all they was waiting to do when it came to Oprah and stuff. I felt Oprah was special, and that's why I sent her my story, um, rap story, child abuse in 1984, along with, you know, some math problems that, you know, I had got a hundred on because at the age of six, I didn't know the difference between an apple and an orange. And at the age of eight, I was filling up pages of raps and rhymes and I'm the, you know, originator of rap and stuff like that. But I struggled in school and things of that nature. But it was my younger niece, Dion Nelson, who was teaching me math. And I was proud when I got that hundred and I sent it to Oprah with my um, child abuse story. Real talk. And she sent a letter back, you know, saying she'll get back with me, okay? That was a long time ago. That was in 1984. She hasn't gotten back. I'm not mad because I believe that um, iron sharpens iron. You understand what I'm saying? Real talk. You understand what I'm saying? And we kind of needed each other to grow up and stuff. She grew up on TV. I grew up in the streets and stuff. We may never meet, but I'm here to tell you we have a better relationship than most people I have met in my whole entire life. And I realized she and I were both set up, you understand what I'm saying, from the word start. You understand what I'm saying? They saw our potentials. They put one against the other. And, you know, at the end of the day, they wanted us to both fall or go against each other, kind of like Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad. You understand what I'm saying? But the truth of the matter is, you know, I have nothing but love, admiration and respect for the lady because had it not been for her I wouldn't see the pitfalls in the industry called you know you know the music industry the you know industry as a whole and stuff real talk you understand what I'm saying and me being on the outside looking in she's able to see things for what they really is and things of that nature you know what I'm saying you know people always want to take your spot and then you give them a chance and they fuck it up you understand what I'm saying? So I allow people to get my spot in Chicago. And all they did was mess it up. You know, Oprah, she has her own own network, you know, studio. She deserved it. But she thought, you know, if she messed up, people would uh, be able to, you know, give her a pass. But people look forward to your failures more so than they do your success. And that's unfortunate, especially when you have helped them come up, you know, and feed they family and things of that nature. If it wasn't for me, my sister Linda Nelson, kids would have never had the opportunity that they, you know, have had. You understand what I'm saying? College, vacations, things of that nature. I've never finished college. That I never. I barely got my GED. I haven't been on a real vacation. I haven't had a real fucking day at the spa. But you know, people tend to take me for granted. But what they really need to know is. They're only cheating themselves because people like Oprah and myself only come around once in a lifetime. And when we're gone, we're gone. And when the shit hit the fan, it's harder to come back up than it is to stay up for real. And that's the honest to God's truth. So, Oprah, you are special in my book. And that guy who fucked it up, you dumb as fuck. Because I would marry her in a heartbeat. And that's the honest to God's truth. Peace.